All right, guys, how to stand out from other wholesalers. If you want to stand out from other wholesalers, you have to give your seller options. Like you have to, you have to present the seller with multiple solutions to their problem. Because as a wholesaler, it's our job to find a solution for the seller and for the investor. We bring the solutions to the investor, but we present solutions to the seller. So how do we do this? Well, me personally, I always give my sellers three options, but one of the main options that you always want to give is creative financing. Every wholesaler now is just making, especially the beginner wholesalers, all they're doing is making cash offers. They're, they're finding out the ARV, finding out the rehab cost, you know, for a flip, you know, not even for if their buyer wants to keep it as a rental. They don't even know how to, you know, calculate cash flow which i'll talk about in another video but usually beginner wholesalers or even wholesalers who have been doing this for a few years you know and they have a few deals under their belt all they're doing is they're finding out the arv finding out the rehab costs finding out the max allowable offer and then they offer that cash offer so as a wholesaler what you want to do and what i've been doing for every day of january since and i'm going to give two examples is creative financing you have to learn creative finance creative financing bro it is it is key in this market because not that many buyers are buying with cash right now and if they are it's a really insanely good deal like they're very cautious right now with you know the prices of everything dropping and inflation going up and uh interest rates and all that jazz like they're very cautious on how they spend their money especially if they're going to be spending their cash so what you have to do as a wholesaler is educate yourself, adapt, and learn creative financing. You, you just have to get with the program. You have to learn creative financing. So me, I have two mentors. Really, I have three. But so far, I've just been working very closely with two. And these two mentors have been walking me through this process of how, to, how creative financing works, how to regurgitate it to my sellers, and how to present it in a um convincing manner to my sellers you know because most of everybody nobody really understands like real estate agents don't really even much understand creative financing so even when you're dealing with a real estate agent you have to explain it to them in an easy to understand manner so um yeah so there's a video that jerry norton dropped on him uh explaining creative financing to one of his sellers i'm going to drop the link to that uh in the description it's a really 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 good video extremely good extremely like like basically this is that is what creative financing is so what you want to do is after you're wa done watching this video you want to click on that video and then watch that video and study everything he says watch it multiple times three to four times write down every word that you do not understand and then find out the definition of that word, contact your mentor or another more experienced wholesaler or an experienced investor. If you don't have a mentor, get one. It's so easy, just contact an investor. Just look for an investor, someone who you kind of resonate with. If, they're, if they have multiple properties and they deal with wholesalers, just ask him questions and then eventually he'll become your mentor, like straight up. So, just contact an investor. So watch the video in the, the link in the description. Watch that video. Watch it like three or four times. Write down every word, term, and phrase that you do not understand. Google it. Look up some definitions. Write the definitions out. And then contact an experienced investor or your mentor or whoever and ask them what those things mean. And then learn how to regurgitate it and ask them to explain creative financing uh, to you. Um, but it's extremely important that as a wholesaler, you know what creative financing is, you know and understand how it works, and you are able to explain it like easy to your uh, sellers, right? Because cash offers aren't working. Like a lot of a lot of these sellers are asking for way more than what their house is really worth. All right, and with creative financing, you could give them their asking price. You can give them their asking price on terms. And I'm gonna explain uh, what that means in a minute, but with creative financing, you can say, look, I could give you your full asking price. 
except it's not going to be in cash. Like you're not all going to get it at one time. So let's get into it. I'm going to explain creative financing and in simplest terms, and then I'm going to give two examples of creative financing offers that I gave within the last uh, week and why they didn't work out. All right. So creative financing, basically it works when, so if, if a cash offer won't work, right? Because he's just asking too much for his house and he's probably asking too much for his house. One, because he thinks it's worth more than it is. And two, he probably has a mortgage on it. And the mortgage on it is probably about what it's worth. So with, with a scenario in creative financing is you would take over the mortgage. You would not assume their mortgage. So their loan, so they have a loan on the house, right? That's called a mortgage. I'm, I'm assuming you guys know what a, a, a loan is, a mortgage is. It's a loan from the bank to buy a house. And now they're paying the bank every month to live in that house, basically. So now they want to sell that house, but they still have a mortgage on it. So a scenario in creative financing is you would offer them to take over the mortgage. Now, you're not going to assume it. When you assume a mortgage, that means that the loan is now being in your name or your investor's name. We're not doing that. We're not putting the loan in our name. We are going to be making payments on the loan, making payments to the mortgage through an escrow company. All right. So they're going to be in the escrow company. The escrow company is going to be taking care of everything, all the paperwork, everything. So what's going to happen is they're going to take the deed. This is already sounding complicated, but so you have a house with the mortgage, right? The seller. All right. And they have a loan from the bank, right? And let's say the mortgage is for a hundred. Let's keep things easy. A hundred thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars right? And they want to sell the house for $150,000. Well, you would say, okay, look, I'm going to take over your mortgage. I'm going to make the payments to your mortgage every month through a third party servicing company, through, a, through an escrow company, right? They are going to, and they're going to give you the paperwork. They're going to give you a notification every time I make a payment and um, everything's legal. Everything's legal. This is not illegal. Everything is legal, right? So they're going to be paying your mortgage for you. I'm going to be paying your mortgage for you through an escrow company. All right. And then, so there's a $50,000 difference. Well, I could give you that $50,000. Sometimes it depends. Sometimes you could give them on what your buyer is willing to do. They could give them the $50,000 up front, make them happy. Like, okay, that's what I wanted anyways. Or you could give a down payment and you most likely what they're going to do is you could give a down payment. And you could give them that money over time with, say, interest. You could give them the money over time with interest. And, and then, like, over a five-year period, a 10-year period at a time. Usually, the longer, the better. Right? So, we're going to take over your mortgage. We're going to pay your mortgage every month. Right? The deed is going in your buyer's name, though. I know this is sounding complicated. Just watch the Jerry Norton video and, like, write down the things. Or right now, write th down things that you don't understand. Right. And then get the definitions and talk to a mentor about it. But you're taking over the mortgage. Essentially, you're taking over their mortgage and you're paying them the difference. That's how you're going to give them the full asking price of what they're asking. If they're asking for one hundred fifty thousand, say, all right, I'm going to give you one hundred fifty thousand. I'm going to take over your mortgage. That's one hundred thousand. I'm going to give you fifty thousand. But instead of giving you the fifty thousand up front, which you could. But instead of giving you the fifty thousand to make this as good, you want to make this as good for the buyer as possible. You want to make this as like easy and like lenient and um, attractive to your buyer as possible. So most buyers, they don't want to come up with it. They want, most buyers don't want to have put anything down. If they could get a house, this is the best deal that you could give your buyer. If you could get a house for no money down, it's a deal, bro. Buyers will usually jump on that all the time, depending on how much they have to pay later on. So essentially, we're taking over your mortgage and we're giving you the difference. But we're not giving it to you up front. We're giving it to you in payments over time, during, uh, over a five-year period of time or a 10-year period of time with interest. You could say with interest. Um, that way they're, they're earning money on their money already, right? 
And uh, sometimes they'll be like, well, how much are you giving me down? You know, that's where negotiation comes in. This is all about negotiating. Uh, sometimes you'll be like, look, we don't we usually don't give any money down. Right. We just give you uh, the money over a five year period of time and we give you interest, earned interest. Uh, but sometimes sometimes you could work out a small money, small if they it depends on what situation the seller is in as well. If the seller is in a situation to where he needs money, that's why he's selling the house. Because he needs money to go do something. We'll find out how much money he needs to go do that right now. And then be like, okay, well, we could give you $5,000. We could give you $10,000. We could give you $15,000, $20,000, whatever. We could give you a little bit of money down now to help you with your situation. And then over a five-year period of time, two-year period, 10-year period of time, these are things you got to negotiate. We're going to give you that money with earned interest. That way you have the money to go do what you got to do now. Plus you're getting cash flow every month, right? And you don't have to worry about the mortgage being paid off. Essentially, that's what creative financing is. You're, you're, you're financing the house creatively, all right? Hence the name, all right? And this is another thing I wanted to say. As a wholesaler, it's our job to talk. It is our job to talk. So in the skill, it's sales. Like our job is sales, verbal sales. So we have to learn what to say and how to say it. All right. So we have to learn the terminology, all the, all the terminology and all of the lingo. And we got to learn how to formulate it in a sentence that's understandable to the seller. Oh, and the term terms, right? Right, terms on buying something. It's basically what I just explained. Create a find. What are the terms? Well, the terms are: I'm going to take over your mortgage, and give you a thousand dollars a month over a five year period of time with five thousand dollars down, and you earn interest. Those are terms. Like, what are the terms of our agreement? Terms. Like, it's just simple. Look up the definition of terms. It's exactly that. So, but as a wholesaler, guys, it is our job to understand um, real estate lingo and how to regurgitate it all to our seller. Our job, we're, we're basically, we're educators as well. Like we're salespeople, but if you're a really good salesperson, you're also an educator, low key. Like we educate our sellers and sometimes we educate our buyers. Like sometimes... We find things out and we talk to like my buyers teaching. I mean, my mentor is teaching me something like just always give what if scenarios. Always talk to your buyer. Uh, always talk to your seller or your buyer. Like what if um, what if we could uh, do twenty five thousand dollars down and, you know, we give a 10 year payment, you know, over time, you know, for only one hundred dollars a month. Like, what if, how, how does that sound? And you just throw things out there. This is how you negotiate terms with your buyer and your seller. Like you just throw out what if scenarios. What if, um, what if we look, Mr. Seller, what if, what if we gave you no money down, but we gave you earned interest on the payments that we make every month and it's enough cash flow to help you in your situation and where you're going right now. You know, you just throw out these what if scenarios and you cater it to their situation. You cater these terms towards your seller situation and what your buyer's criteria is. All right. It is our job to not only understand lingo and uh, sell, but it's our job to educate. We have to educate. We have to constantly be learning. All right. And in this market right now, as a wholesaler, you have to learn creative financing. There's no way around it. Like, that's just what it is. Like, and now, like when you're adapting and you know this much, like now, like when the market, if the market goes down again, like you know how to, you know how to do, like, you know how to handle yourself in these situations, like in a, in a, in a down market and all that, like, you know how to handle. So let's get into these, uh, examples, right? I didn't want this video to get too long. So there was a house, right? Um, the asking, the asking was 315. This is on Zillow. The asking was 315. I got him down to 295. He wouldn't go any lower than 295. The rehab was about 150 to 200,000. And the ARV was around 550 to 600. All right. So there's a big spread, but if it's, it's 300 buying price, 
Then you got rehab 150 to 200. So that's 450 to 500. So it's like half a mil, half a mil in, and then 600 ARV costs. I mean, 600 ARV. It's really 550 to 600, depending on what happens. I thought it was 600, but my buyer slash mentor said it's 550. So one of the reasons it didn't work out was the house was so big it was five bed three baths four thousand square feet right next to a university and it was just so big that we, and it cost so much so when we did the creative financing he wanted too much money the seller when he was willing to do seller finance and all that seller finance is different from creative financing I'll make another video about that, but he wanted like $5,000 a month. All right. And the house wasn't going to cash flow that month that much as a rental. So that got out the window. Like he wanted a certain amount of money down and he wanted $5,000 a month over a five year period. And that just, it wasn't, if we did that, it wasn't going to cash flow any money. So the only option we had was to flip it. And when he looked at it, um, when he looked at it as a flip, you know, the profit was, I thought it was like, you know, closer to like 70 to 100,000, but my buyer was saying it was only 50,000, you know, so it's his money, he's going to do what he wants. So he thought that being in half a million dollars, um, being in half a million dollars for only a $50,000 profit was not worth it. He was like, I can make more profit with that, with a smaller house that doesn't take as much money. I said, fair enough. So that's why that, that one didn't really exactly work out. The other one is... The other one, uh, it was three bed, two bath, 1,300 square feet. He was asking 185, right? He was asking 185. The ARV was around 220, 220, and the rehab was 20 to 30,000, right? So as a flip, he was saying as a flip, you know, obviously I gave him a cash offer of 165. Always give cash offers. Always give cash offers. And then you go into the creative financing. Always give cash offers. Let them know what the cash offer is. Because if the cash offer is right and they accept the cash offer, that's the best case scenario. Right? But so the spread on this wasn't that big. So we went into this is on this one specifically. I really went deep into explaining to the seller what creative financing is. And I kind of messed up, too, because I was like, we'll assume your loan, which in reality, we're not assuming anybody's loan. Assuming a loan means the name, the, uh, the loan goes from in their name. Now the loan is in my name. We're not doing that. The loan stays in their name. We're just making payments on it every month. But the deed to the house goes in our name. So. So we did, so I explained to the seller, like, look, can we take over the mortgage? We'll make payments and we'll give you the difference. And he was like, yeah, we could do that. Yeah, we could do that. But the, I messed up by saying, uh, we're going to assume your loan. So he's like, let me talk to my sister because it was a secession. Their mom died. It was their mom's house and they're getting the house now. The loan's in their mom's name. They want to sell the house so that they could get a little profit because if they don't sell the house and pay the loan off, then the bank owns the property, right? You can't sell a house with a loan on it unless the loan gets paid off or the loan is being paid, All right? So, so when I called back and I was like, look, we're not gonna assume the loan, we're just taking over. He was like, oh, hell no. You know, he's, he like kind of spazzed out. He was like, no, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we're not gonna let you make payments if the loan's still gonna be in our name. That is a recipe for disaster, yada, yada, yada. So that's why that didn't work out, right? But I offered to take over the mortgage. The mortgage was, I believe the mortgage was 140. And so they wanted like a 30 to $50,000 difference. And I said, okay, we could do that. All right. And I talked to my, my buyer and he was like, yeah. And, but that's when he, he was like, look, stop saying assume because we're not assuming anything. I was like, oh, okay. And he's like, look, if there's a fifty thousand dollar difference or whatever, try to get it down to twenty thousand dollars. We only want to pay him. We want to pay him as le as least as possible, and and see if we can give that to him over time. You know, so those are two scenarios. From within this past week, I made these two offers. Really, so it was four offers. I gave them both cash offers, and then I offered them a creative financing. 
So just look, guys, when you're going on Zillow, whenever, wherever you get your leads at, and, you know, if you get to the point to where you get to make a cash offer, uh, run the numbers or, or no, don't even, you don't even have to really run numbers to like give a creative, to offer creative financing. Just be like, look, Mr. Seller, what if, you know, what, would you be open to creative financing? And it's like, what is that? What's creative financing? What exactly do you mean? Well, you know, uh, buying the house on terms, you know, so, you know, maybe we give you a little money down to help you in your situation, whatever that may be. And we take over the mortgage, we start making payments on the mortgage, and we uh, give you, we pay you some money over time, over a five year period. And at the end of the five years, we pay the remaining balance of whatever we said we were going to give you. So just you want to talk to your sellers in these what if scenario type of deals, like what if, you know, what if? Yeah. So click the link, click the link in the description to the Jerry Norton video. Watch that video, guys. That is such a detail. He did such a great job at explaining creative financing. And it's exactly what I'm talking about. Write down every word and every term and every phrase that you do not understand. This is how you get better. This is how you get better as a wholesaler at explaining things to your seller. Write down every single thing that you don't understand. Google the definitions and then talk to a mentor or talk to somebody more experienced than you in real estate and ask them, what does this mean? What do you, th what, as far as you know, what does this mean? And it's best to talk to, it's best to talk to investors, right? Sometimes real estate agents, they could give you a lot of good information, but sometimes real estate agents don't even know about creative financing because all they know is sell houses. Like that's all they know. They just know this is the price, make your offer. Now we sold the house. That's all they know. Investors, they know how to move money, use money, do lease options, do creative financing, seller financing, all that. Taking over mortgage subject to all that. All those terms. Look up all those terms I just said, bro, and and learn about them. Learn how to exp learn how to explain them and then talk to an, an experienced investor to help you with these because the best person to talk to is the person that you're selling to like find out what your buyer wants your buyer is your investor slash mentor right that's it guys that's how to stand out from other wholesalers especially in this declining market that's everything you got it like you have to learn creative financing you have to learn creative financing subject to seller finance um all that you have to learn all these terms like balloon payment all these terms uh look them up guys watch the video in the description learn a lot all right stay motivated